Hello and welcome to DVD Shrink. Today I will be showing you how to remove parts of a DVD, a movie, documentary or anything else that's on a DVD file and using that clip that you've removed in PowerPoint or in any other way that helps you in your teaching. First off you would insert the disk into the computer and obviously load up the program as such. First you want to go to open disk, click on open disk and the open DVD disk appears. As you can see I'm using the movie Cosy. Click OK. What's happening now is the computer is reading the disk. When it's finished reading the disk you will see on the left the Cosy, its menus, main movie and any extras that may have. Quite often DVDs will have extras. Over on the right hand side you have compression settings, the video which is on automatic and I'd leave it at that, audio and sub picture. These things you don't really need to know in this particular lesson. What you want to do though is go to the button reauthor. Click on reauthor. Now this is where we get to the tricky part. On our right we have the, D the DVD browser, the movie Cosy and everything that is in the movie from menu titles through to video settings, the main movie, which is the important part, extras or anything else that are there. What we want to do now is, because the movie is, or the part of the clip is in the main movie, I want to drag the title across to the left hand side. When, you're, when it's there, just take your finger off the left button. As you can see, the title is here. What we want to do is remove part of the movie to use in something else. Now it's a good thing to do is to review the movie and record down on a bit of paper the times that you want because quite often the times could be between one, 1 minute and 37 seconds and 5 minutes 7 seconds. So you want those exact clips. Go to the set start and end frames button which is here click on it. What you have now is a set start and end frames box. What you have here is where you can go to in the movie to remove that special part. We're going to go to 5 minutes 30 seconds. Now there are two ways you can do this. The first way is with the slide which gets you to a place rather quickly but it's not very accurate. The second is the forward and fast forward buttons here. This button goes in frames of 13 frames a second. Then you have this button which is a bit quicker which goes at about 5 seconds at a frame. But for our now we will go with this slide it across to 5 minutes 30. It can be quite tricky. Okay, Now we'll use this button here to go back. As you see it's going back at 5 second intervals. Now we want 5 minutes 30. At the moment we go 5 minutes 27 seconds and 2 frames. So using this button here it takes it along at a slow pace and we have 5 minutes 30 seconds. Now we want an end frame so if the, it, the end frame can be anything from the entire movie to one second outside. As you can see here I've pushed it all the way it won't go past the start frame but we want 6 minutes 37 seconds so we slide it across we've gone too far so what we do we just click back to 6 minutes 37 seconds now we use this button here for only one and there we are 6 minutes 37 seconds. Now down the bottom it shows the total duration of our clip which is 1 minute and 7 seconds. This can be quite important if you want to keep the times of your clips down to give students a better opportunity to discuss what they've seen. It also gives you the, the file size which is 42 megabytes. This can be important too in using um, these clips to put into a CD-ROM. Click OK when you're satisfied that you've got the correct frames. 
down here we have a preview box. You can play the preview or you can not. It's, it's entirely up to you if you do need to use it. Just click play. And it will go all the way across. You can pause and play or stop it and it will go to the very beginning again. When that's done, you want to go up here to backup. Backup basically is taking the clip that you've made and putting it into a file for later use. Clicking on backup gives you the backup DVD box. What we have here is select backup target, which is hard disk folder. What that means is it's a hard disk folder on your computer. Now select target folder for DVD output files. I like to create separate files for this so you know exactly where your clips are. So what you do here is click on browse and I like to use the desktop because that's where I am using a lot of working tools. So click on desktop or wherever you want to put it and click make new folder. Okay so the make new folder dialog comes up. Call it whatever you think is appropriate. In this COSI clip 1. Hit enter when you're satisfied with that. Now it comes up COSI, click one. This is where your work's going and it's on the desktop. Click OK. Now what you find is it's ready to remove it. All you have to do now is click OK. What's happening now is it's encoding and removing that clip for you. You can have the enable preview button on or off. I like to have it on just so you can really see what you've got. Okay, now backup is complete. DVD Shrink has finished backing up your DVD. DVD output files were saved to the following location, so you know where it is. Users, Shane Ellis, Desktop, Cosy Clip. What you can do to get in there is click on it and it up comes the, the folder. I'll click it down for the moment. You click OK because you're finished with it and you can continue doing that as many clips as you need. To remove that clip all you do is hit the erase button and you just go back dragging over the title using the set frames and end frames button to continue doing what you need. Just before I go I'll minimize this and open up our working folder. What we have here are a variety of different video files. The main one you are looking for will always be called VTS lower score 01 lower score 1. This is the one that has the entire video file. This is the one we'll be using later to convert. That ends DVD Shrink file capture. Thank you for listening.